Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, we talked about porosity in the last session, uh, and then my laptop died off, so I'm back. After charging my laptop, we will be talking about isothermal compressibility. Uh, we will focus on why isothermal and why not just compressibility. And then we will talk about, first we will talk about the definition of compressibility in physics terms. And then we will talk about the details that we require or we need to focus on as we talk about compressibility in the subsurface rock samples, right? So uh, I'll draw a diagram in front of you guys so that things get better. So this is my rock sample, the good old rectangle again. And then I apply pressure from all the 360 degrees, right? That's what happens. So uh, to give you perspective, suppose this is my surface and these are the layers of, uh, this is my surface where, you know, uh, the rigs are there and uh, this is the rig and this is a house and this is me. And uh, down there we have a rock sample, right? So the, the forces or the pressure will be applied on this rock sample from 360 degrees, all right? 360 degrees is where, uh, it will be pressurized from throughout, right? And that's why you have to assume, even if you are, I'm drawing it in 2D, you have to assume it's in 3D, right? Mm -hmm. So the pressure is always applied and due to the subjection of this pressure, there, there is always a tendency for this volume to reduce down, right? So if you apply this pressure, the volume will try to reduce down to a particular, so the initial volume will be now shaded and suppose the new volume now is somewhat this thing, smaller than the initial volume. Of course, uh, it might require time and over time the volume might decrease, but this happens. The pressure reduces the overall volume and I'm talking about the bulk volume right now. So the pressure is still applied, but now we are talking about the differences in volume, this difference, right? So this difference is there. So due to the application of pressure, there'll always be some reduction in volume. And the way to quantify this phenomenon is what compressibility is. So let me write the, the expression for compressibility. Compressibility is always written in terms of, if I want to write in differential calculus terms, one by V, which is initial volume into del V by del P at a constant temperature. I'll come to why the constant temperature part is here, but there is of all also a negative sign here. Bunch of things to talk about and focus on, which are commonly asked in interviews, why the negative sign and why the compressibility is always talked about in, uh, at least in reservoir engineering, it's always talked about in isothermal sensors. Okay, so let's focus on the negative part first. You can see the pressure is increasing, right? The pressure is increasing, but the volume is decreasing. But if you ignore the negative part here, the volume, initial volume, let's say it was 200 centimeter cube. The reduction in the volume was five centimeter cube. The application, the Delta P was around 100 PSI. All of these three terms are positive. So overall compressibility would be, Del V would be negative, right? Del V because the volume is reducing, the pressure is increasing the overall calculation would, would turn out to be negative. But can you, can you, does it make sense to say that a rock has a compressibility of minus something, negative of something? Of course not. So you always multiply artificially by a negative sign to convert this thing into a positive number. All right, as simple as that. Because the overall, whenever you will see that in physics a lot of time, whenever the differentials, the, the numerator and the denominator have Opposing trends, the numerator is increasing, the denominator is decreasing, uh, the differential, overall differential will always be a negative term and the overall physical quantity you are referring to cannot be negative, so you multiply it with a negative sign to call it a positive number, right? Okay, of course, I mean, it's understood that negative compressibility means that the volume is decreasing due to an incremental pressure, but physicists and reservoir engineers don't like that negative sign peeking around. So we multiply it with a negative sign. Now talking about why this thing is here, why isothermal. Of course, by the rule of physics, if you are applying pressure, that pressure will try to do two things. It will try to convert or squeeze or reduce the volume. Uh, energy can neither be destroyed nor be created, right? So if you are applying some pressure, 
that energy can be converted in two things. One, that can be used up in squeezing the rock sample. Two, it can be used up in heating it up, right? Or changing the temperature of the system. But if you go about the path two, uh, it will be very complicated. We are focusing on, and that component is normally very, very negligible. So we try to focus on, uh, we are trying to assume that all the pressure that you are apply, applying is used up in totally squeezing the rock sample. The 100% portion of that pressure is used up in squeezing or reduction in the volume. There is no part of that pressure spent in trying to change the temperature of the system or heat or something like that. So that's 100% transfer of energy we are talking about. There is not like 98% of that pressure is used in squeezing up and 2% is used in heating it up or something like that. We are talking about a total energy transfer. Pressure applied, volume decreased. That's it. That's why we are talking about it in terms of isothermal compressibility so that we keep it out there very clear. All right. Okay. So now let's talk about uh, the units of this overall thing. Now, uh, one more thing is, and this is where a lot of students get confused. A lot of, let me have a thicker pen now. A lot of students get confused. Where they get confused is uh, the same definition when it is written in terms of deltas. Okay. C equals to one by V del V upon del P. This is normally a definition uh, where initial and final point are known. And in this case, normally people don't use the negative sign. You will see in a lot of textbooks, uh, you won't find the negative sign because uh, normally they, they use this, this overall expression in such a way that they already account for uh, the negative. So su suppose the pressure, the delta P, delta P is P of higher magnitude minus P of lower magnitude, which is, uh, you can calculate it anyway. And delta V is also calculated in such a way. Okay. The final volume is lesser than the initial volume. So they calculate it like this. V initial minus V final. So that delta V is also positive. Delta P is also positive. The ratio is also positive. And V is already positive. So you don't need to apply the negative sign anymore. Right. So it's just a, just a way to define terms. But overall, the calculation, if you understand why the negative sign comes in, you are ready for an interview preparation or the answer to that interview question, right? Okay. Now, talking about compressibility. Now, this was compressibility for normal physics students, but let's talk about compressibility for petroleum engineering students, right? Let's talk about compressibility for subsurface. Okay. I need a thicker pen. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Compressibility for reservoir engineers, right? Okay. Now, I'll draw a picture which will have all the components inside a rock. Okay. This is a rock. The shaded portion is my grain. And inside the yellow part is what? It's fluid. The yellow portion is my fluid. Okay. Now, pressure is being applied from outside as well. P external. Pressure is being applied from this fluid part as well. P internal, which is nothing but pore pressure or fluid pressure. Of course, uh, it's like a reaction to this external pressure, right? Now, whenever you try to pressurize from, from outside, when internal pressure or the formation pressure of a rock decreases, the delta P increases, right? And the overall volume, it reduces. Overall volume of this circle that you see here, it reduces. We are talking about a delta P here. Delta P is what? P external minus P of fluid or the pore fluid or the pore pressure. So when internal pore pressure or formation pressure of a rock is subjected to a constant external pressure. And when the internal pressure it reduces, what happens? Two things happen. And you might question why the internal pressure is reducing. The internal pressure might be reducing because you are trying to withdraw fluids, right? You're trying to withdraw fluids or maybe fluids are transferred to some well in production. There's always some migration of the fluids due to permeability and effective porosity. So fluid pressure in the inside might decrease a bit. That increases this delta P that I've written in front of you. 
and that might lead to two things okay this might lead to two things the two things are one is as delta p increases first thing that happens is the bulk volume of the rock decreases the one that i that i just show you here the second thing that you can see is the grains they also try to expand right the solid material they expand this this particular portion that you see this particular portion expands and both of these things have a common effect the common effect is both of these things they lead to a reduction in what they reduce porosity very important point very very important point here people might question why porosity is reducing in a rock sample uh, porosity is a function of time reservoir simulators they they talk about it all the time porosity is a function of time of pressure and why is that this is why right because over the course of time as you produce fluids the delta p increases that reduces the bulk volume the solid grains they also expand the overall effect is that the initial position the 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 volume the final pore volume it reduces down to this much or you know there is an overall reduction in pore volume and hence a reduction in porosity okay right so that reduction might not be that substantial that's why a lot of approximations they talk about porosity in a static manner uh, overall in application of 1000 psi of delta p can change the porosity from 20% to 19.9% and that's how small this is uh, application of such a huge pressure such a huge pressure differential these two attain in such a small magnitude of porosity right so compressibility and hence the change in porosity they depend on the delta p which is p external minus p internal or p outside minus p inside rather than the absolute values of po or pi which is p outside or pi which is very important to understand this delta p is what causes the change in volumes of the rock sample or the change in volumes of the porosity and that's why uh, that's how the compressibility in the subsurface is defined okay this delta p is also referred to as net pressure p net so at any given delta p or at any given p net the compressibility uh, can be defined as the change in pore volume per initial pore volume per delta p okay so if i want to define my porosity let me slide further my god let me slide to the right what i'm talking about here is compressibility of a rock sample in subsurface is referred to as delta v of pore upon v pore which is initial pore multiplied by delta p net the net pressure differential okay and this is a very important definition because this is the definition where you can also bring in porosity okay so these these are the fundamentals using which a lot of numericals are framed there are definitions which talk about compressibility by using just the uh, bulk volume but that's a physics based definition but in reservoir engineering a subsurface engineering we are more concerned about definitions that relate to the pore volume delta v pore and the way to explain it is uh, i just talked about the two pointers how delta v pore happens how the pore pore volume it changes and how that leads to the definition of compressibility right okay so that's about it in terms of compressibility uh i will try to cover further rock properties i'm just checking if i have something else to talk about in uh, in compressibility okay so yeah uh, i guess that's it uh, also remember that uh, compressibility is not just limited to rocks compressibility is a function of any any particular matter any state of matter can have compressibility gases have compressibility which is very huge uh, uh, solids have lesser compressibility uh, liquids have compressibility in the middle ranges also remember that uh, uh, unconsolidated rock samples have huge compressibility okay uncompressible uh, unconsolidated rock samples have huge compressibilities because they are subjective 
I mean, if you apply pressure on them, the volume reduction will be substantial. And compressibility is directly proportional to the volume reduction. And hence, unconsolidated rock samples normally have a huge, normally a huge compressibility. I'm talking about hu uh, huge in, in relative terms as compared to other kind of rock samples. Uh, the order of magnitude of compressibility in rocks, uh, at least when I'm talking about limestones and sandstones, the order of compressibility is somewhere around 10 to the power minus 6 PSI inverse. That's the unit of compressibility because volume to volume, the units get cancelled out and the unit of compressibility is the reciprocal of pressure. Right? Okay, so there's one more thing called the effective compressibility, which is nothing but the porosity weighted average of uh, compressibilities. Okay, so the effective compressibility is what? CO multiplied by phi plus one minus phi C of rock, right? Because a rock always has two components, right? A rock has, uh, this is more like if you, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, well logging examples where you calculate Wiley's time average equation. Uh, it is similar to that, right? Effective compressibility is in fact a function of the, the you know, the fluidy part of the rock plus the rocky part of the rock, okay? So the weighted average, if you want to calculate it, it will be calculated this way. CO, which is the compressibility of oil multiplied by phi because oil is present in phi plus one minus phi which is the rocky part multiplied by the compressibility of that rocky part. A very simple weighted average. All right, so a pretty detailed discussion on compressibility. Uh, let's talk about more rock properties. Happy learning.